Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we're continuing our geometry playlist and in this video we'll be discovering a very important new principle in geometry for math olympiad. So, so far like in our uh, geometry course, so far what we've done is we've discussed like the centers of triangle, the three centers of triangle, the orthocenter, the incenter, and the circumcenter, and we like did some uh, angle tracing relate, related to them. And in this video, we'll be like introducing a new, very important principle in Math Olympia that you need to master in order to solve like basically actually geometry, uh, geometrical problem uh, for all levels in Math Olympia, whether they're easy, medium, or hard. And that thing is the cyclic quadratrix. So like basically half of the problems, half of the geometry problems in Math Olympiad like are related to like in some uh, kind of way to uh, cyclic quadrilaterals. So maybe like you have lots of points and like suddenly you discover a, like a hidden cyclic quadrilateral that you can use some like somehow in order to solve your problem. So basically this like uh, thing is really important and that's why basically like we're going to talk about it how can we show that a, like a quadrilateral is cyclic and the proof basically for like the properties that we are going to discuss today. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. All right, so basically what's the definition of a cyclic quadrilateral? Well, basically it is any quadrilateral, like for example, A, B, C, D, that has like a circle that passes through its four points. So basically, let's say we have a circle here. And let's say we have four points. Something like that. So we're going to draw the quadrilateral. All right, and let's basically call this quadrilateral A, B, C, D. All right, so basically we call this quadrilateral A, B, C, D cyclic because clearly like its four points uh, lie on some circle. All right, so basically like we want to find like, uh, for example, uh, methods to show that a quadrilateral is cyclic or if, it, if we know it's like cyclic already, like in this case, we know ABCD is cyclic. Like what are the properties that we like have? Actually, there are lots of properties related to cyclic quadrilaterals. However, because like right now we're discussing angle tracing, so we're interested in angles. So like we'll take the properties that have some angles uh, in them. All right, so actually basically in today's lesson, we'll be discussing two very important properties for cyclic quadrilateral. And basically, let's start with the first one. So the first one actually is really simple. So, like in any cyclic quadrilateral, A, B, C, D, we have the two angles that are uh, like opposite, like for example, B and D, this angle and this angle, A and C, they are also opposite, this angle and this angle. Well, basically any two opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral, they add up to 180 degrees. So this angle, B plus D is simply uh, 180 degrees and so uh, like uh, so are A and C. A plus C is also uh, 180 degrees. So basically the first property is the following. B plus D angle B plus angle D equals 180 degrees or of course you can say phi if you're dealing with radians or we can also say that A plus C equals 180 degrees. So that's our first property basically. So actually, like the cool thing about this thing is that like this, these two are equivalent, like the two statements are equivalent. What does that mean? That means <coughs> that a cyclic quadrilateral is cyclic, like, a, oh, sorry, a quadrilateral is cyclic if and only if the two opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. So for example, we know that this is cyclic. That means that B plus D is 180 degrees. And if we don't know that this is cyclic, we just have some random quadrilateral ABCD, ABCD, and like uh, we know that 
B plus D equals 180 degrees, then that means that it is cyclic. That means that there is some like kind of circle that passes through its four points. All right, so like uh, that's the first property that like we use a lot uh, in uh, like when dealing with cyclic address rods. All right, so let's now like take a look at how can we prove such a thing. Well, actually, like the proof here will, will depend on the definition of circle because like, like right now we don't know anything like uh, except for the definition, the basic definition of circle. So what is the definition of circle? It's basically the set of points that uh, like have equal length to some center, right? Oh. So basically like what we are going to do here is we'll bring O, the center of the circle, and we'll try to like link these angles to this point O. After all, if you remember, we've discussed something like that before, right? When we dealt with uh, a circumcircle, right? If you remember, like we know what is the angle uh, when we have triangle ABC, we know the angle BOC, we can express it using angle A. So maybe perhaps we can do the same thing here. All right, so basically like let's uh, jump uh, right into the solution or right into the proof. All right, so basically what we are going to do here is simple. First of all, we want to show that B plus D is 180 degrees, assuming that this is cyclic. So we'll just like draw the line AC, like the diagonal. All right, so like the center of the circle is either on the right to the right of line AC or to the left of line AC. So let's assume like it's here, clearly in the diagram here, it's to the left. So basically like let's say it's here. So let's say it's here. And let's like denote uh, like by O to it. All right. So because O is the center of this cyclic quadrilateral, like the center of this circle, that means that O is the, circum the circumcenter of this triangle ABC, right? After all, like this circle is the same circle that passes through triangle ABC. So it's basically the circumcircle of triangle ABC. So that means O is the circumcenter for triangle ABC. Well, what does that mean? Well, we can now try to express, uh, like, like find something that has expression that has angle B. If we just draw like uh, OA and OC, right? So let's basically draw OA and OC. So basically, actually, if you remember, like we discussed this case before, what is this angle? Well, it has two cases. Uh, if it's inside triangle, or sorry, like if it's uh, like at the opposite, uh, basically side to AC, like than, than B, like if they are on the sim similar, like, like if O was here, for example, we will have its two, it's two times B, this angle. However, if it is here, it will be 360 minus 2B. So basically, this case, like we know that angle AOC, so right now what we know is that angle, like let's write it here, angle AOC equals third 360 minus 2B. All right, great. So that's by taking like this triangle. Clearly now we need to get D involved. So that, mean, uh, that means that we'll take this triangle ADC. So if we take triangle ADC, well, O is also the circumcenter here. However, like now, this angle is just two times D, right? So actually we also know that uh, AOC, the same angle, is just two D. All right, so what does that mean? Well, clearly, we know that this expression is the same as this thing. So that means that, uh, like, we can take this thing here, and we simply get that 2B plus 2D equals 360 degrees. And just by dividing by 2 here, we will get that our result, B plus D equals 180 degrees. And that's what, like, the thing that we want to show here. And like you can actually do the converse here to get like the, the opposite, like uh, because we said that these two are equivalent. Like if we have cyclic quadrilateral, then we have this, and we have if we have this, then we have a cyclic quadrilateral. So you can actually do the same, in my like I think uh, that, uh, and like you will get the same result here. 
All right, so now we're done with the first property. So now we'll basically move on to the next property. Actually, before we just move uh, to the next property, I just like would like to add a third property here that is basically like the same as the first property. So basically, if we know that uh, B plus D is equal to 180 degrees, then we, if we take this angle, like if we extend AB like this, so basically like we'll get this angle, like basically we call this angle the external angle of B. So we call like this angle, like ABC, this one, the internal angle. However, we call this one the external angle here. So what do you think is the external angle here? Well, actually, like we know that the external angle and the internal angle, they add up to 180 degrees. However, guess what? We know also that this one plus this one, they also add up 180 degrees. So that simply means that this angle is the same as this angle. So what does that mean? That means we like now have a third property that is like uh, the external angle of like uh, here, the external angle is basically the same as uh, the opposite angle to its internal angle basically. So like this external angle, this is the internal angle and this one is the opposite uh, angle to the internal angle of B. So that simply means if we know that this angle is D, then we, are d then we know already that this is cyclic quadrilateral. So like it, basically like it's the same as the first property. However, like it's really nice because some, uh, sometimes like you have, for example, a configuration that you know that this angle is the same as this angle. However, like you don't always like, uh, like try to calculate this one. You say that this is, is 180 minus D and then like uh, add these two to 180 degrees. So basically like if you know that this angle is the same as this angle, then you immediately say that this is cyclic. Like this should come always to your mind if you have like some quadrilateral and you have like an angle here, an external angle that's equal to the opposite angle to its internal angle. All right, so basically like that is a really simple property. It's basically the same as property number one. So now let's move on to property number two. All right, so for property number two, like we're going to need to uh, draw the two diagonals here. All right, so let's like draw diagonal BD. And we also draw diagonal AC. All right, so what is the uh, second property. So basically it states that the angle DBC, this angle right here, DBC, and the angle a CAB, this angle, are basically the same actually. So this angle is the same as this angle. And of course like you can repeat the same for the other parts like the other angles in the configuration. So basically like this angle is equal to this angle. This angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle. So basically like the rule here, the principle is that the two angles should be uh, opposite basically, they share basically the same arc. So you can see that CBD like is opposite to the arc CD and CAD is also opposite to the arc CD. So that means they are basically the same. Like the same for example here for the arc BC. So the angle CDB has the arc BC and CAB also has the arc CB like they are opposite to it so basically they are the same. All right so basically like now we just need to show that uh, DBC the angle DBC is equal to DAC and of course like still this is an equivalent statement so if you have if you know that angle CBD is equal to the angle CAD in some quadrilateral, then you know that it's cyclic. And if it's cyclic, then you, you know uh, this one is also true. All right, so how uh, can we prove this actual property? Well, we'll just like do the same principle here. We'll just introduce O, which is the center of the circle again. All right, so let's bring the center again. So let's say it's here, for example. So basically like the center is either uh, like uh, at the same direction, basically, for A and B like uh, with respect to the side uh, with the line DC or it's the opposite direction. So it's either like here or like above here or like uh, below here, below CD. So let's say like of course here in the diagram it's here. Uh, 
uh, let's say like this is O. Alright, so what we want to do is like just draw OC and OD clearly. Of course, like here, I'm just discussing one case. You can show like the other case here, uh, like the same way. If it's like uh, CD is basically like O is below CD. All right, so let's discuss this case basically. All right, so we also here want to find a ha like a way that to, to express this angle using O. And that's really simple because guess what? O is the circumcenter of CDB, this triangle. That means that, let's try the angle. That means that the angle COD is equal to basically two times this angle, which is CBD. However, also we have O is the circumcenter of triangle ABC. That means that this angle is also equal to, so COD is also equal to two times this angle, so two times CAD. And basically, if we just compare these, we'll just get the result, right? Because 2 times CBD is the same as 2 times CAD. That means that CBD is the, is the same as angle CAD. And basically, now we've shown that the result, uh, basically, the, the property holds. All right, so basically, now we have our second property. If we have two angles that share like the same arc, then they are, they are equal. Uh, and if we have two angles that share the same, basically, psi, uh, like they are uh, they are equal, then th this, the quadrilateral is cyclic. So this is an equivalent statement again. So as a summary, today we've learned about cyclic quadrilaterals. Like how can you show that a quadrilateral is cyclic? And if we know that a quadrilateral is cyclic, then what do we know about its angles? Today we would like discuss three properties regarding its like the angles of cyclic quadrilaterals. Property number one: if we know that a quadrilateral is cyclic, then we know that b plus d is the same as A plus C, the same as 180 degrees. So basically any two opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral, they add up to 180 degrees. The second property was, uh, like any two angles that share the same arc, they are equal uh, in a cyclic quadrilateral. And if they like, uh, like of course the converse is also true. So basically here the angle DBC is the same as the angle CAD because they share the same arc CD. Of course the other angles as well. The third property was basically the same as the first property. So basically it involved the external angle of some angle and some like internal angle. So let's say here the, the external angle is the same as the opposite angle to its internal angle. So if we know that this is true, then we know that our quadrilateral is cyclic. And if we know that our quadrilateral is cyclic, then like this is true. Like the external angle is the same as the opposite angle to its internal angle. All right, so like these are the three properties, like the three tools actually that we're going to use a lot uh, in order to like uh, deal with uh, geometry problems. And in fact, like we, we, will be, we will revisit the centers of triangle. However, now we know how to deal with cyclic quadrilaterals and we'll try like to discover some amazing stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel and see you guys in the next video.